Hi there. I'm Brad, the builder of what I call the Hydra Hammer Press. I thought I'd give a quick run through of how the machine works. In essence, the hammer part is very similar to the tire hammers. I use a 13 inch rim instead of the larger 15 inch rim. I get a little bit, uh, a little bit more compact build that way. It's not quite as large. It has a 60 pound ram with the dies on it. Solid anvil of 4140 at a 32 inch working height. The difference between this machine and tire hammers or just a forging press is that it's two in one. So I'll give you a quick rundown of how the machine's built. It uses a one horsepower motor for the tire hammer side. And I have a five horsepower 3450 RPM motor running a uh, 11 gallon per minute dual stage pump. So I get pretty good forging speed. I've been calculated out what it is, but it's, it's really quite fast. And um, it's been a real treat to have. It's awesome for making any Damascus. The reason that I built this machine, I had it in my head for about three years trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. What I identified is that I, I, I can't stand, I love mechanical hammers, but what I do not like is I'd never liked how adjustment is such a pain. I didn't want to have to stop. And I mean, to some people it's not a pain because they might do production runs and set the machine up one way and just do the same thing. But I wanted to have something that kind of bridged the gap between a Sahindler or, you know, the same ax, but had the tactile feel that I've always appreciated about a, a mechanical hammer and the simplicity. I mean, they can be relatively complex, but they're easily repairable without having to have a fancy weld shop. So this machine has been running for over a year now in my shop. I do all tool forging. I don't, I rarely work mild steels under the hammer. It's mostly tool steel and uh, it's not struggled at all. There's never been a breakdown. It's tough as nails. I made quite a few differences. So I'll, I'll go through some of those for you. So this machine, I use, uh, I use a hydraulic cylinder to lift it up and down. And there's oil everywhere because I, I like to keep this thing liberally oiled. It makes the machine run well. So this hammer, I use a hydraulic cylinder to lift the machine up and down on what I, what, what I call a mast. So it's an I-beam in essence, and it's a telescoping mast. So this whole head assembly will raise up and down on the fly as I'm working. Um, I, liked, I like the idea of putting the gib system behind the actual hammer. That way I wasn't limited quite as much in my, si in my size for my die face. I have about a three inch by two and three quarter inch upper die and the lower die is what it's almost three inches or it's three inches by five inches. Sorry, I can measure those up and get exact specs. I used uh, oil impregnated UHMW for the, the RAM, the RAM slides. And um, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. I'll show you how it runs. I do have a platform so I can raise the hammer up and down. And it's amazing because it kind of bridges that, I found that I really love it. It bridges the gap between a self-contained hammer, which you have instantaneous uh, height clearance between the dies. So I can work a block of steel that's uh, half inch thick and three inches tall and upset it on the three inch, then lay it down right away. I can do that almost as fast as you can do it with a, with a self-contained pneumatic hammer. And that has really, and that's mostly what I do is mostly tool work. I'm using different handled tools under the power hammer and I use all the same tools for both machines. And it's been awesome. I haven't had to make specialized tooling that's got a short profile. I can do very light blows. I can do super hard blows because I have the ability to up and down adjust my rim on the fly as I go. On the back, this is the one format that I had. I had this big cylinder off of a Komatsu forging press that I have. And just the way that it lent itself to being built into this machine, I decided to go with a, a cylinder from the bottom up. Um, the black switch there, the electrical switch is for the, for the hydraulics and the white switch is for the motor. So it's fairly straightforward, the forging press. Um, it works very well. I can build these moving forward. I am going to be building another one. This one here is, is sold now. 
I will be building more of them. So if people are interested, you can contact me through Facebook or through my website. But uh, yeah, they're, they're amazing. It's amazing how seamless it is. You don't have to go from one spot to another. It's a very natural transition. Having a mechanical hammer with that hydraulic adjustment on the fly, I was told when I was kind of brainstorming with the idea that, you know, you're gonna have a lot of problems with seals and, you know, uh, hammer, you know, the, uh, the effect on the it's shock loading, my apologies. You're gonna have shock loading on your cylinders and you're gonna have all kinds of issues, but I've never had any problems with it. The cylinders held up, no problem. If I wanted to, I could make a, a lock that goes onto the mast. So I could just have a quick lever that I clamp it on and, and, it, and it's no problem. It's been great. So without any further ado, I'll give you a, a bit of a dis, a bit of a, a rundown on how it works. I'll show you how everything is. And then uh, tomorrow a friend of mine will be coming over and we're going to be making some canister Damascus and a lot of other Damascus and he does mostly that kind of work and he he's going to come for one more run before the machine gets picked up on Monday. But if you have any questions or you'd like to have one of these hammers built for you, that's easily doable. I can build it with different power, uh, different motors for the hydraulic system. I can build it basically however you want. Um, one other little feature, it's pretty similar. Obviously I have the foot, the foot treadle for my up and down mo motion, but I also built it with this spring return right here. What I found is that for doing certain types of work, it's really nice just having the auto return, but I don't always want to use it. So I just turn it off. I just pull the spring up so it automatically retracts it up and down as I'm using it. So yep, it's been a great machine. If you have any questions, contact me. Um, this is the, this is the 55 to 60 pound unit and a 25 ton forging press. The overall unit weighs, when I calculated it, it worked out to be about 18 to 1900 pounds. Um, very solid. I had, didn't have to put in a special foundation. And I'll give you a quick demo of how it works. And then tomorrow, I'll get some video of us forging some Damascus.